Welcome to another episode of Mike's Tool Fun. I uh, picked up the uh, Klein Tools, the RT390 Circuit Analyzer, and here she is. Comes in this nice little fancy package. I'm going to be doing an uh, unboxing of it, and we'll talk about what's inside of it. And um, I'm going to test it out. Now, it does, uh, it tests GFCI circuits as well as arc fault circuits. I don't have an arc fault circuit to try it out on, but we'll at least try it on the GFCI, and we'll go from there. Thank you again. Okay, so we've opened up the box here, and so I got the uh, inside of it. It comes with a Klein Tools pouch, like a carrying case for it. It also comes with the uh, instruction manual here. And then, of course, it comes with the, the actual circuit analyzer. One feature I noticed already from uh, this one as compared to the old one is this. This part comes in. In the old one, it was hardwired. It was such a pain in the butt to try and put it into my uh, tool bag. Um, I didn't have a carrying case for it. I just, I have a nice pocket. I have actually a uh, Klein Tools uh, Tradesman tool bag and uh, this fits, it fits into the front pocket of it, but it was always a pain in the butt with this. So I love this feature here. So let's talk about the different options here. As you can see on the screen there, we have an arc fault trip mode, a GFCI trip mode, a 30 milliamp trip mode and a load. So the GFCI, it would be your class A GFCI receptacles, which uh, trip at six milliamps or higher. The 30 milliamp would be your class B, which uh, you probably use in like an industrial setting or uh, if you needed to trip at a higher rate so you don't get your nuisance tripping, um, depending on the equipment you're plugging into it, you'd want to use uh, class B, which usually generally trips at 20 milliamps or higher. And then the load, what the load does is it tests voltage drop. I think that's a really cool feature. I want to try it out on here. Um, I'm running an extension cord with a GFI receptacle on the end of it. Uh, half the extension cord is a 16 gauge wire. So I'm hoping I'm going to pick up a significant voltage drop considering that it's a 16 gauge wire. It is a 15 amp circuit. Also, you have your power button here, and then you have your, whether it's energized or not, and then you got this really cool display feature screen. So, I have with me here a GFI receptacle that I have on the cord end. Uh, this is what I take on job sites with me, just so I have a GFI protection. So, we're going to plug her in. Simple. Plug it in. All right. So, if you notice, it indicates it's energized. How cool is that? All right. So I'm gonna turn it on, just press the on button, see what happens here. So I notice you gotta press and hold it for like two or three seconds and then it comes on. What a cool feature. Um, it takes three AAA batteries. The kit does come with the AAA batteries, which is also neat. All right, so we're gonna do the basic. This is a GFCI class A receptacle, so I'm just gonna trip it. So you press and hold the GFCI trip and look at that. And then it tells you what it tripped at and whether it's good or not. So it tripped where exactly where it was supposed to be. So at 8 milliamp, 8.1 milliamps is where it tripped. All right, so I'm gonna reset this. And then I'm gonna try, I don't have an arc fault receptacle to test that. So at another time I'll do, I'll test that when I get a chance. Um, and then the 30 milliamp, it's, this is a class A, not a class B. So I could trip it and we'll trip the, it'll just trip it at above 30, 30, 32 milliamps. So what I'm gonna do right now though, is I wanna check the voltage drop. I'm expecting a voltage drop because I only have a 16 gauge wire for uh, like this cord is 12 gauge, but I plugged it into a 16 gauge extension cord so I can see the voltage drop. So let's do this. So we're gonna run the load and look at that. So it's telling me that I have a, uh, I gotta flip this, 6.2% voltage drop on a 12 amp circuit. And then 113 volts, 7.8% voltage drop on a 15 amp circuit. And at 109.8 volts, a 10.4 voltage drop. You try not to be any more than 5%. So the fact that this is 6% and higher, sorry, I'm hiccuping. <laughs> the fact that this is 6% and higher tells me that this cord is probably not the right cord for what I need it for. And that's it. So I think this is uh, pretty neat. I'm gonna go take this, I'm gonna plug it directly into a, uh, a receptacle that this cord's plugged into, so then, and I'll 
do another little quick show of what uh, what we got going on. Alrighty, I'll be back. Okay, so as you can see, I have I've taken the the GFI just the cord part, 12 gauge, and I plugged it in. This is the this is where I had that extension cord plugged into. So again, shows energized. So we're gonna turn it back on. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do another low test and see what kind of voltage drop we have. So right there, it tells me I have a 4.6% drop at 12 amps, which means this is circuit is exactly where it's supposed to be. But when you get up to 15 amps, it starts going higher at 5.7. And then if I were to do a 20 amps off of this, it would be 7.6% drop. So obviously I don't want to run anything more than 12 amps off of this. Now it also could be because this is an old house and it's got old wiring in it. And um, you know, it runs a fair distance back to the panel. Normally when we wire houses now, we'll run a 12.2 from the panel to the first receptacle. And then from there we'll jump and do 14.2 NMD. To the rest of the receptacles and this will help with uh, preventing a big voltage drop. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to unplug it from the GFI receptacle and I'm going to plug it directly into the receptacle and we'll see what kind of drop we got there. So I'm just going to shut her off. I didn't need to shut it off but I did. Okay so we're plugged in. And then we're going to do our load reading. So it looks like it didn't really change too much by being directly plugged in there. So as you can see, the number's right there. So this cord that I had in there is a 12-3 um, cab tire cord that I use for uh, just for a temporary job site plug. So I mean, it's going to it's going to have a less of a voltage drop because the gauge wire bigger the gauge wire less of your voltage drop that's it thank you again for watching